This is an overview of the income offer and angle curves on page 99 of the Varian textbook for perfect substitutes. Uh, so before we get into the graph itself, I'll give a quick overview of some of the concepts that uh, we should be aware of. So the first is uh, the income offer curve. It's a curve, uh, essentially, of our demanded bundles, the optimal bundles, as we change our income, so as we shift the budget line, but still holding relative prices constant. Uh, this is also called the income expansion path. So here I've given an example of what an income offer curve looks like. I've drawn two budget constraints here, two budget lines. And uh, here A and B denote the optimal bundles at each of these budget lines. So I've drawn this budget line here with uh, an income of M. So our y-intercept would then be M over PY. Uh, and then this is our indifference curve here uh, that has our tangency conditions so that we know A is the optimal bundle. Then we have the second indifference curve here with an income of M prime. Uh, the second indifference curve here that tells us B is our optimal bundle. And the, indifferent, uh, the income offer curve um, will trace out our optimal bundles as we change our income M. Uh, so now a quick overview of perfect substitutes. Uh, so in this case, in, in the next graph, they're, they're assuming that the utility of both goods is equal. And so the, the optimal solution uh, specializes in one good. And so in a perfect substitutes case, if the price of good one is less than the price of good two, the consumer would put all of their income in P1 or X. Now a quick overview of the angle curve, very similar in nature to the uh, income offer curve. It just uh, changes slightly in the sense that we're graphing the consumption of one good as directly as a change in M. And so we'll see an example of that on the next page. So I'll start with our uh, income offer curve, which is here on the left. It's this here. It's, it's, it's the, the x-axis. And so I'll, I'll explain why that is. So we have here a typical budget line drawn in, and we have our indifference curves on the graph. I've added uh, two of my own budget lines to uh, explain what's going on. So let's start with their budget line. The budget line here, clearly it's intersecting uh, with the indifference curve at this point here. And so we know that this is an optimal bundle. Why do we know this is an optimal bundle as opposed to where an indifference curve might intersect here on the y-axis? Well, this indifference curve is further out, means it has a higher utility, means in an optimal scenario, we should be choosing this bundle over any bundle here and over any bundle on this line, in fact. Uh, the case is the same for the budget lines that I've drawn below and above. So take this budget line here with a lower M uh, it intersects the x-axis here, so we know this is where our optimal bundle is. Take a higher income here, uh, and M prime uh, intersects the, uh, or it is, uh, yeah, it's intersecting the indifference curve here, so we know that the optimal bundle is here. So we know in perfect substitutes that the indifference curve uh, uh, is not going to have uh, necessarily the same slope as the budget line, so it typically has a corner solution, uh, which, which is what we're seeing here. So we can imagine now, drawing a budget line, infinitely many budget lines here on this graph. And it's always, the optimal bundle is always going to be on the intersection uh, of that indifference curve in the budget line, which is always going to be at the x-axis. And so if we trace all of those out with an income offer curve, we just get the x-axis, which is uh, what's being depicted here. Now, the angle curve uh, is uh, slightly different here. We're measuring our consumption of good x as we are changing our income. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing that as we're increasing our income, we are increasing our consumption of X. Uh, that, that's what we see here on the income offer curve. So uh, it's logical then to assume that the slope of the angle curve, which graphs the uh, consumption of X um, uh, next to how much income we are spending, that it should have a positive slope, which it clearly does here. Uh, why does it have a slope of P1? Well. Uh, we can recognize that the amount of x, good x that we buy is simply our income divided by the price of x. Which means that the slope here, so amount of x that we can buy uh, is equal to the price, uh, income over the price of x, right? Um, which means that the slope of this line, so m x, uh, if we want to get in terms of m, because that's the, that's the y here essentially, x times px, or p1 rather. So that's why here clearly this is this would be y equal to x times the slope, which is uh, p1 here, px, py are the same thing. 
so that's why the slope here of this angle curve is P1, and uh, this is an overview of the income offer curve on the left. So I hope that was helpful. Um, this, uh, again, is the graph on page 99 of the variant textbook for the income offer curve of perfect substitutes.